and rituals that I did when it came to reinventing myself was observing loops. Now loops have been known by many different words in many different languages in many different eras, but loops are basically the repetitive habits and behaviors we do, usually in one aspect of life, like fitness or dating or with money, where we keep screwing ourselves over repeatedly, and some of us for our entire lives. Now this is the reason why I'm inventing the Master of the Day journal coming out in a month or two. Because it's the journal that does the most important work. It's not about habits, it's not about what we do, it's not about the daily routine, it's not about the checklist. It's about focusing on the most valuable asset, you and your character. So in this video, the first one in the Reinventing Yourself series, I want to introduce you to this concept called loops and what it does and how it sabotages you. Hey guys, Alex Hein here, author of the book Master the Day. Now, this idea of loops is simple. Now, an interesting thing about me is that ever since I was a kid, I've always been very impact driven. So, I always wanted to make sure that my life mattered and the work I created in the world was important. Like, if I died, people would miss out on something great. And so, as a result of that, I never once took a job for the money. I had a lot of beliefs around money, like money was evil, rich people must have some negative aspect to them, that it was stupid to take a job for the money, or that you could never do work you're passionate about and make money. Well, no surprise, the reason why I never had a lot of money was because I didn't value money. And I told myself these BS beliefs that it's not important, it's the root of whatever negative traits and negative people. And overall, what I started to learn was that the reason why my bank account was always just what I needed was because I told myself, the only amount of money I need is just what I need to survive. And so I had to reframe this belief about money because I had loops, in other words, these repetitive beliefs that were then affecting my physical reality. And what I learned later is that this is like the ultimate science of achievement when you understand your own loops and then you begin to break them. And one of the most common ones I see quite a lot is successful people that don't take care of their health. There's often a loop or a story there behind it or emotions or people who tend to date the same person. So we all know that girl or that guy that keeps dating the damaged, messed up person that's way below their game, their level. Like, they're a really quality woman and they keep dating these bummy musician types that don't even pay their own rent, they're leeches, they don't even treat the woman that well, and they're really not that special, let's be honest. And you're like, well, why does that girl keep dating these guys? There's a loop behind it. The loop could be many different beliefs that Maybe she thinks that attractive, high-value men will leave her. Maybe her dad was one of those musician types, and so it's the women marry their fathers type thing. And the same dynamic happens with men, of course. But the loop is so interesting because everyone has them, and they're very common in money, relationships, and health. So why are understanding loops, why is this so important, and how do they screw us up? Well, one of the things is that there are many loops revolving around the things we do to self-sabotage. So for example, a girl I knew said that she dated a guy that was very good looking, very successful, and all of his high status triggers, and he treated her very well, made her, it triggered this emotional feeling that he was going to leave her, because he had options, and she knew that, even though, even though his habits and rituals Prove to her that he was loyal and faithful, and he was. It was triggering a feeling of insecurity. And what she realized was that after that guy, she only dated guys that she knew she was way better than. Because she knew that, like, this dude is not going to leave me. He knows I'm way out of his league, and he feels lucky. And yet, was that really her living her best life? No, because she was doing this habit out of fear and not out of love and excitement, which is I've talked about in a video here before. And that loop... Like, is it going to sabotage her whole life? On some level, it may not ruin her life, but it's certainly not the best, most exciting, passionate life that she could be living. And with some people, it's the loop that having money is greed, or that all CEOs must be greedy bastards and evil people, or that people that are all rich are somehow bad. So how do you recognize loops in your own life? The primary thing is, just like what I've talked about here, the external mirrors the internal. So... Very, very easy to see. The first thing is you can ask friends and family. What are my habits that you hate the most? 
That's a heavy question, right? When I go home, I guarantee you, my mom, my sister, my brother, my dad, they will all be able to tell me, hey, these are the habits I hate the most about you. But really, the way you can know, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, asking your friends, is you look at the aspects of your life you're not getting the best results in. Maybe it's dating. You date, you have bad, volatile relationships. There is definitely emotional stuff there. Because otherwise, if, if I were emotionally healthy, I would be repulsed by these emotionally unhealthy people. Look, take a look at what's going on there. Finances. If you never have enough money, evaluate your beliefs about money and why that's the case. Fitness. You know, it's funny how many successful people neglect their health. And I'm like, why don't you go to the gym for 45 minutes? And they're like, you know what? That one hour is going to make me more money. And yet I could bet them that money, that the way they feel and the way they look and the way it changes their mood and their energy... That one hour a day workout will make them so much more successful than if they skip that and if they eat better rather than doing what's quick and convenient. Those are all beliefs that very successful people have and that lead to neglect and eventually heart attacks and death. For me, that first area was money because I felt like, you know what, I'm impact driven. I don't care about money. But when I looked at that closer, I was like, you know what, that's bullshit because I want a lot of money. I don't want to struggle. I don't want to have to feel like I'm one paycheck away from poverty. I don't want to feel like I can't help out my siblings if they need money or help retire my parents. If I earned double the amount of money, I could help retire my parents. That would be objectively awesome. If I earn more money, I can go to Paris and Europe every summer. That would be awesome. If I had more money, I would have an emergency fund. I could take care of medical expenses. I wouldn't have to stress when I have a family one day. I want more money. And so I had to feel comfortable with the idea that I want a lot of money. I had to feel comfortable that, you know what, it's okay for me to be financially successful. It doesn't change any trait about me in a negative way. That's it. It's okay to want that thing. Or it's okay to want that kind of person, that caliber of person to date or marry. It's okay to have that body. It's okay. And when you look at the traits that are underlying those things, it's going to make you realize, wow, this is why I keep sabotaging in that aspect of my life. So I would recommend going through a very basic journaling exercise to realize what channel of my life is not getting good results. And then you write out all the beliefs surrounding that, around my fitness, around my money, around my dating. And then you can begin to reanalyze those beliefs every single night, morning and night, and realize, huh, I believe that, but is that really true? Okay, my mom said I'm always going to be fat. It's genetic in my family. That's the story. That's the loop. So why bother trying? That's the manifestation. You don't try because you think you're going to fail like you've always failed. So screw it. Eat the friggin' donut, right? It's good now. Tastes good now. Reward now. That is a loop I've seen in so many coaching clients. I always fail. Why bother? And you have to look at, well, why do you believe you always fail? And then they're going to say, you know, I tried this diet, that diet, that diet, that diet. My mom was always fat. We have a genetic pattern. We're fat. We're always overweight. Have these health problems. And that is the line of evidence we provide to create a belief. This is some deep stuff, I promise. We'll go into this more. But this is maybe the most important aspect of reinventing your life. So before you go, I want you to comment there below. Let me know, just pick one loop, one belief you have that is sabotaging you from living that best aspect of your life. Because even deeper than habits is these loops and these internal virtues we've talked about. So I will keep you posted on the journal. But... The best way to stay in touch is to grab the free 7-day and personal development weight loss challenge, modernhealthmonk.com forward slash YouTube, and you can also check out my last videos right here and right here.